Quick disclaimer, this video is sort of unorganized as it's mainly just a rant video. I really wanted to be on this guy's side, I really wanted to. When it comes to exposing shady individuals or criticizing people for the wrongdoings, I love that. That's a sort of community policing that is incredibly required here on the internet in a sea of online creators where many could be some extremely questionable people or entities, but only when it's done right. You see, when it comes to journalism, investigating and research and reporting your findings, the most important things that matter in it all is honesty, transparency and accuracy. If you are working on a story, you want to gather all the evidence so that you can make a conclusive and accurate report once everything is said and done. You don't want to make jumps, shortcuts, assumptions, at least not without doing your due diligence and then reporting it unbaked and filled with holes. Unfortunately, something that has befallen Mr. Dogpack404 here is that this dude genuinely seems like he's either a complete amateur or doesn't care for journalistic integrity. I'm not gonna go easy on this guy because too many YouTubers already are and are absolutely milking his word and hearsay as gospel, which I find incredibly irritating. Let's get right into it, starting with his newer video. Disclaimer, I will be mainly talking about Dogpack's newest upload in this video, as I want to see his final upload before I make a full 30 to 40 minute criticism, which will come once everything is said and done. Down. Uh, so just a quick profile on James Warren. Uh, he's, he's Jimmy's cousin and, and secret CEO, and I say secret because, you know, they're they're not very open about that fact. Like he doesn't post about it on social media. It wasn't ever attached to his LinkedIn. He's never featured or, or really referenced anywhere. I heard that he's very aggressive. I've, I, I've heard him referred to as a psychopath who screams at people and hits his, his uh, girlfriends. Uh, there's allegedly domestic violence charges that were filed against him. So immediately right off the bat when I was watching this, the first thought that came to mind was, so you're accusing someone of being a woman beater, but then instead of actually verifying the information, you try to deflect by saying allegedly. This is a problem because you cannot imply that someone did something this bad without actually having definite evidence of the fact or at least have credible corroborations. Saying I heard isn't solid enough, unfortunately, especially in this case, because it immediately gets worse. Um, and I say allegedly because it turns out there's a lot of people in North Carolina named James Warren who, who assault their girlfriends, I guess. So uh, I'm still having people look into these cases, um, specifically that surprise witness on YouTube, uh, she's been super helpful in like behind the scenes, just submitting uh, freedom of information requests and, and just helping me out a lot in general. She's super nice, super smart. She'll be posting. And I say allegedly because it turns out there's a lot of people in North Carolina named James Warren who assaulted their girlfriend, I guess. I'm still having people look into this. Why even include this? Why shoot yourself in the foot like that? Why insinuate or imply that someone did something like this if you can't even validate the information? Why include it in the video at all? Why make such an unbacked claim? Why do something that could definitely come back and bite you in the ass? Some people will get mad at me and say, he's just exposing the truth. He's doing the right thing. Doing the right thing would all also include validating the information before saying something as reckless as this. If your entire goal is to expose Mr. Beast and take him down, why allow these holes in your presentation? Why make it easy to reinforce the idea that you're a non-credible, irrational amateur that shouldn't be taken seriously? Why make it easy to criticize your failures as an investigator? This is incredibly important to point out and reinforce to everyone because there are some people out there, including Dogpack himself, saying Mr. Beast is silencing Dogpack and has no reason to be suing him. But when you leave yourself this open to be picked apart, it actually gives more ammunition to be used against you if your goal is to expose someone. At that point, if you were wrong about one thing or two things, or you were negligent and didn't do your due diligence or proper investigation, who's to say that anything else was thoroughly documented or researched in your expose? Who's to say that you don't have some sort of bias that is tainting the well when it comes to this information? People get so mad and upset when people like Dogpack are called out, but there's a good reason for it. Dogpack himself has went on interviews and even expressed on Twitter that he has an issue with the fact that there are people out there criticizing him for being a disgruntled employee who's a bit unhinged and potentially a druggie. But then you go on to do bullshit like this that fits the idea of you being incapable of actually doing thorough presentation of evidence. He offered cocaine and hookers to editors to stay late. Uh, and, then, and then the really big thing is that there was some incident between him and a female colleague uh, that resulted in the female colleague leaving the company and receiving three years in severance pay. 
I'm still actively looking into this incident, so if you have information, let me know. Uh, but I've heard from multiple credible sources that this this is true and this did happen. I'm still actively looking into this incident. So at this point, this is just a rumor that you haven't even fully verified or have something conclusive to go off. You say you have a lot of credible sources, but who are these credible sources? These are nameless, faceless individuals that are also just stating hearsay. I could say I have a Ferrari in my garage because my mom told me I have one there. My mom is a credible source to me. Are you going to believe me at face value? Of course not. Literally anyone can say anything at any time and anything can be twisted and rumored in a giant game of telephone as well. Someone could have heard a vague rumor, someone else could have heard another vague rumor, and boom, now you're running with allegations that you claim are credible. But wait, it does get worse. I know this is an incredibly silly juxtaposition to make, but let's be real here. There are significant issues with using hearsay as a presentation of quote-unquote evidence. To cut just a little tiny bit of slack to Dogpack, and that was sarcasm by the way, he does say this is all alleged, and he still has to look into all of this. But this leads back to the main question. Why even present it in the first place if you can't or haven't to verify the information beyond a bunch of hearsay. Now you've gone on and led people to assume Mr. Beast has countless offenders working for him when you have very little to substantiate the claim. Do you not understand how much this could legally fuck you? The funny thing is that one of the very first things he says in the beginning of this video is, yeah, I spoke to my lawyers before making this, but I am willing to bet that he didn't speak to anyone at all, because even a somewhat half-witted journalist would advise you not to do the shit you just did, and a lawyer would definitely do the same. The allegations you are presenting are very sensitive. They are things that need to be handled properly before you even begin to imply that someone was doing anything. Not just that, but then you credit someone that would assist into looking it into it for you, and the worst part is, here we go, she found absolutely nothing to substantiate the allegation. They're alleging things. One of the things that these people are alleging, or one of these people has alleged to Dawson, is James Warren, this guy we just talked about, the secret CEO, had committed some type of domestic incident, some type of harm onto a girl that he was dating. I did look into this, and I went into it thinking he had done that, okay? I went into it thinking he did it, and I gotta, I'm just gonna have to find the paperwork for it. I searched and searched and searched, and there was one case number I looked into. Again, I could probably make a whole video on this, but but suffice it to say that I do not think that the case number that is associated with this picture right here, and I told Dawson this, and that's why he said this in the video. I do not think that this particular case is the same James Warren. For many reasons, I did, like I said, I did a few hours of research just into this case alone. I was in the property records. I was on Facebook looking people up. I was doing all kinds of looking at the marriage records in the newspaper. I just don't think this is the same James Warren. It doesn't even appear that this James Warren is even related to this James Warren that we're talking about. And there's a lot, it's a common name. James, a very common name. We got 511 Jameses and Jakes just at the Mr. Beast company. So I don't think that that is him. So I am not prepared to make the allegation that he committed some type of domestic incident that has been put on the record because I've not been able to find that. I so you present something that has no realistic tie to these claims at all, first five minutes of your video and you're already making these bold claims that are nothing but just hearsay and rumors and imply there's a semblance of truth to it because there was a domestic abuse case and it turns out the person you plug can't conclude that there's anything to suggest this at all. Congratulations moron, you're a moron. Even the person you've been playing middle schooler games with has a better sense of integrity than you do. And I find that incredibly ironic because now you've got egg on your face and countless people are now running with the presumption that Mr. B C O O is a domestic abuser when there's no evidence of the fact. Uh, people came out corroborating a story and then ultimately uh, Jimmy ended up apologizing and offering him $190,000, which to me I think is, is uh, most likely an admission of guilt. You know, you don't apologize for, for things that you didn't do. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to get that out of the way. This part right here really irritated me. You imply that Mr. Beast paying Weddle makes him guilty. Guilty of what exactly? What did Mr. Beast do to Weddle? Keep in mind, humans have agency and autonomy. Weddle could have literally stopped working for Mr. Beast at any time, and he could have refused to perform for Mr. Beast content also at any time if he truly valued his dignity. Weddle accepted $50,000 out of dignity because he would be undignified if he accepted the rest of the other $190,000. So which one is it? Can he or can he not be coerced by money? Because at this point, it seems like he has a fuck ton of autonomy and agency to not care about the money at hand. So what is Mr. Beast guilty of? It can't be torture because evidently, Weddle could in fact have kept his dignity and left at any time instead of being a whiny loser. Take it straight from the inconsistent horse's mouth. That's my brand, is being honest and crying a lot. But, but you know how it looks, you know, for you to 
to give me this cash that I desperately need. I want my, I want my audience to trust me here. You know, I want, I want to remain credible. Counter offer. 50. You, you save $140,000, you just give me 50. I'm going to win because I'm being honest and I'm being authentic. And that's something you guys will never have. I don't want an apology and I don't want your money. Every penny I make moving forward is going to be because I earned it. But what's not allegedly is that James Warren is the former COO of acquisitions of a real estate investment firm called Greenstone Ventures LLC, which is one of the businesses listed in this indictment of his former uh, business partner, Joshua Hutchins, uh, who was sentenced to 10 years in prison for running a real estate Ponzi scheme. Ponzi schemes are great up until they just go bust. Also, he implies James Warren is a scammer and then adds a little joke about Mr. Beast being a fan of Ponzi schemes, which again, you're implying that Mr. Beast is somehow aligned with scamming people. Only for the fact of the matter is that James Warren is actually just tangentially related to this quote unquote fraud. Wow, that's very damning information, Dogpack. Such amazing investigative prowess. I guess that's why you had to outsource those allegations to people who further go on to clarify what you're wrong about. It's funny, really. So now you've just gone and smeared this guy, James Warren, over something that you didn't even really know about. You just alleged, assumed, conjectured, and implied someone was malicious when your evidence is as flimsy as a wet noodle. Now the LaCoya stuff, I got to admit, this is actually very interesting. This is the part that I honestly looked at and thought, okay, we might have something here. And even then, you still made the same mistake of flimsily throwing out accusations that you can't fully corroborate. You already fucked up the James Warren claims, why should we believe anything you have to say about LaCoya? Look, truthfully, I don't disbelieve that LaCoya could have potentially harassed someone, but the way you go about presenting all of this information seems as if you're trying to stack and multiply the issue further than what it actually appears. You have all these people texting you, corroborating your claim that LaCoya sexually harassed someone, or roofied multiple people, or sexually harassed multiple people. You're getting more hearsay statements and rumors from people that may not actually know anything about the initial incident or incidents in the first place. You're completely muddying the waters of this quote-unquote investigation. Some people might say, who cares? If he did it, he did it. It matters to be accurate about these things because the moment someone catches you embellishing information like this, even accidentally, Let's give the benefit of the doubt to Dogpack and say he just did an oopsie, okay? When someone catches you slipping up, why should we believe that you didn't just handpick your sources who may also be biased? Why should we believe that you didn't exaggerate the extent of what he did initially? Or why should we believe that the people that you are asking to corroborate didn't exaggerate or embellish the story themselves? Again, I don't doubt that Mr. Beast is a very shady individual, and I don't doubt that LaCoya may have been involved in some very shady things, but the way you try Try to substantiate your claims is amateur hour and idiotic as hell. I would not be surprised if someone came out to correct the record twice and screw over your credibility double. I also don't disagree that LaCoya shouldn't have been someone that was hired or even rehired and swept for in Mr. Beast's companies or related companies, but regardless of the fact, it is your burden to present this information properly. Now, let's move on to the last part of the video. Mr. Beast, let me make something clear to you. The entirety of this video is invoking the feeling of wariness into the viewer by alleging abuse, assault, and sexual crimes. The tonality, clipping, jokes, and word use here is very, very charged. This is like the three cup game where you gotta like keep track of uh, the pets and racists as, as Mr. Beast just moves them between companies. They just sort of kept moving them around. You know, like those killer whales at SeaWorld, after it kills a trainer, they'll then move it up to Seattle. They don't give them their background. Very, very charged. People are watching this video expecting to be told about sex offenders or abusers that are a part of Mr. Beast. So you include Mr. Beast in this video and the way you discuss Mr. Beast in any sort of way is by insinuating very, very bad things by reading out his ex-girlfriend statements in a very charged tone. That's bad because now you're implying that Mr. Beast is bad towards women. You're implying that he might potentially be a lot more sinister than what actually might be the case. But also it's like not that vague if you have reading comprehension and can read context clues. She says she spent years being quiet, never acknowledging that time in her life. 19 to 21 are formative years. It impacted how she saw herself and how she trusted men. Months of therapy. She says how he treats other women will ultimately be how he treats you. 
So how does Jimmy treat other women? I don't I don't really get along with women. I don't I don't really get along with women. I don't I don't really get along with women. Well, women are stupid because they're inferior to men. That when she and a group of contestants who were menstruating during the event had asked the production staff about getting their underwear more quickly, she had been told that it was not a medical emergency. You'll never actually respect a woman, but just act like you respect them. My God. Mr. Beast withheld my birth control. I have ovarian cysts. You can't just stop taking birth control. I don't I don't really get along with women. The last time I've seen something this bad or or seen people botch information this badly has been people like Nick is not green, Mama Max, or even Ethan is online. Look, at this point, this dude has ran me out of fumes. I'm very tired of all of these very terrible insinuations. This is just a preview into the things Dogpack has done wrong. I'm working on other videos, so I just put this video together in a couple hours. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate on this video because a lot of people want to support this guy unconditionally. But I value critical thought. If you dislike it, go ahead. I'm not here to people please. I'm here to call things as I see them. And that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching.